Welcome to this week's Art Wisdom Podcast with Chris and Cass. And this week we have a very special guest, Pilar Gogar. Hello, thank Hi, you for having Pilar. me here. Welcome Hi. to the podcast. It's so great to have you here. And I'd, I'm going to leave it to you to introduce yourself and explain to everybody who you are and why you're on the podcast today. Uh, my name is Pilar Gogar. I'm from Spain. I'm also a space artist like Kat. Uh, I paint with acrylics, oils. I use basically everything. <laughs> um, and yeah, I started to run my business like I started like a few years ago, but I wasn't like improving very much. I was stalked. I didn't know how to sell my paintings, how to price my paintings. So, uh, well, I started um, to talk with Kat and I asked her how to improve and she sent me the link to this podcast. I've been listening to it and then I, I put into practice some things that I learned here. <laughs> Honestly, that makes me so happy. Pad mama. Pad mama. That's really great. So you actually, you've, did you start painting a few, like years ago or did you start actually trying to sell your, your paintings years ago? I started to sell my paintings years ago. Yeah. Uh, Basically, I've been all my life painting. Yes. Uh, but, well, actually, I, I studied English because I thought that being an artist it was not a real job. You know, I had that in my mind. <laughs> oh, my so, goodness. I used to think that, too. Like, I've, we've had a whole podcast about that. <laughs> yeah. but I feel you. And I think, actually, that's something that's really common. I feel yeah. like lots of people listening find it really hard to take themselves seriously because they've been told so many times. Yeah. Oh, it's not a real job, get a real job. So you learn English um, yeah. as a like oh, to, to teach other people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I learned to teach because I was thinking that, you know, it was like um, a more, com more normal job. Mm. Um, I, I met many artists who have studied fine artists, fine art, sorry, who have studied fine art, but they don't know how to sell themselves. They no. don't know how to sell their, 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 their artworks. Mm. So yeah. yesterday I was thinking that the difference between, uh, you can be a very good artist, but if no one knows you and you can, you can sell anything, mm. Very hard, and it can be very demoralizing as well. Can't be, it? You know, yeah, super demoralizing because I think also there's also a little bit of ourselves in every piece of artwork. So if they're not selling or mm. they've getting no interaction, yeah, it can be. You know, you can question yourself a lot. I think at least when I started, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I I really feel that, and I think sometimes at the very beginning, it's not just understanding business. But it's like this mental game of yeah. keeping going while you build momentum. Because at the beginning, there's no momentum. And it's like you're not getting in the interactions or necessarily sales at the very beginning. Obviously, mm -hmm. that comes later. But that's after you've put in all this work. So it's like keeping going despite not always seeing instant results. Mm -hmm. That's a, mm -hmm. that's an interesting mm -hmm. one for sure. And I think it should be a subject in fine art studies. <laughs> Yeah, like I running a business. Not actually, is it not a subject in fine art studies? Not, not in Spain. I don't know in other countries, but not oh. in Spain. Wow, I, I don't think I've ever heard of an art course that actually talks about the psychology of mm. of persistence and yeah. that because also, and I think I can't remember what episode we were talking about this, but gosh, every art piece has an ugly phase, and you have to persist through that. And yeah. sometimes you really want to give up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. you do. I'll be honest. The last, <laughs> the last art piece I had, I put it in the bin. Oh, oh I, I did. I did the Twice. same. I did the same. <laughs> I did the same two days ago. <laughs> I did I'll be honest. Fortunately, the bin was empty apart from my piece of artwork. But yeah, I put it in the big, like a big garbage can. <laughs> did you get out of it? Again? 
I've had enough. I like lift, lifted the lid and put it in. And I was like, I've had enough. And then walked out and then two minutes back, come back and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and I was like, I've got to keep it another go. And then I gave up again. And I was like, oh, I should have given up the first time. <laughs> and I think that's, I think also like whenever you look online uh, artists, you don't see that. What you do is you see the final piece of the person standing next to their beautiful artwork. You might not see the challenges and, and there are challenges. And so I, we get this false pretense. Everyone just pumps out perfect pieces. Even now, I still I still do stuff which I should, especially like when it's subject matter, which I'm particularly familiar with. Sometimes you just have one that, for whatever reason, either the early direction of it or just your mindset or whatever it is that particular day, it's just not working out. Mm. Even when you've been doing it for years, you know, and I, I think... <laughs> Um, I think people forget like they go oh I don't have a I don't create a you know masterpiece every single time is it me am I a terrible art should I even be an artist <laughs> mm. and I think that's common I don't know do you ever get that Chris um oh yeah there's the stages where I do think I've done this a million times and I get to do it and I think I don't know what I'm doing I don't you know but this I want to relate this back to business again mm. because business is exactly the same thing where we see the finished product of everybody we see all those ones on instagram and we see that they're selling and all that we don't see all that struggle in between where yeah. everybody you know you've been through it you, you're going through it at, the, at this time you don't hear about that because that doesn't really serve them to advertise that they're struggling with business right now so you know a lot of them will just fall through the cracks because they don't can't persist but actually persistence is fine but you need new knowledge and yes. that's like I'm glad Peela you've been listening to the podcasts and getting some new knowledge and new information for yourself you know and Pat's um Pat Cat Cat <laughs> tells me you did the auction Tell yeah I did an auction that. I am <laughs> so first. excited about this yeah. so for anyone <laughs> listening um I, a few episodes ago we we put out uh, an episode which was like how to host your own auction I'd run a small one myself and so, Peela, I put that... so Peela, <laughs> tell us what tell us about tell us about it actually I would love to know more about the auction and how it went and all of that stuff yeah yeah it was my first action uh, auction sorry and I was a bit scared <laughs> you know I'm certainty Uncertainty is difficult to deal with. Um, I never found the moment to do a, um, like a launch. <laughs> launch, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm, but I decided to do this auction after all these horrors that we are watching on TV with the uh, Ukraine people. Mm. Um, I wanted to, 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 to get some money to send. So... Um, during those days, uh, like last month, I, I was not I was not able to 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 paint or concentrate myself. Um, I was thinking, how how can I help? Mm. And the only way that I can help is by by selling my artwork and sending money. Is <laughs> the only way that I can do. Mm. So I was I thought, okay, maybe maybe this is the opportunity to do my first lunch. Why not to do an auction? <laughs> Fantastic. So. That was what pushed me to do the, the auction because um, first of all, I think that you have to be per you have to to be pers persistent, but also you have to believe in yourself and um, you know and to have the mentality of okay, I'm going to do this launch or I'm going to do this auction and if it if it's not working, it, it doesn't matter. Right, there's nothing wrong. 100%. I think I did my very first launch in order to get my, you know, to host an exhibition because really my ulterior mm. motive was to get my friends drunk, but um, <laughs> which was not as great a motive as helping the people of the Ukraine. And, and actually, I think that um, there's a lot to be said for, you know, to help you get going is to do things like this because um, you might not necessarily want to put yourself out there, but if it's 
in order to support someone else or something else, then that's a really good way to get, you know, to start. And and honestly, I I just want to say, Pilar, this is such a sweet thought, you know, thing for you to do as well, um, for you to help, because I think a lot of people are wondering how they can help themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I decided to throw caution to the wind <laughs> and sing a story on Instagram. <laughs> um yeah the idea was to be during one week promoting the auction yeah through instagram and twitter mm. but i could not do it, uh, everything by my own because i don't I, I don't have um many followers mm. so i started to send messages to all the artists okay can oh, you well can done. you help me because it's something yeah. Be- because I-, I wanted to 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 spray the word to to get the money to to send to Ukraine. Mm. So I asked them to share. Sorry, of course, not everyone did, but most of them did it. <laughs> so mm. so I made a Google form, um, like Kat explained in the podcast. Yeah. I made a Google for with some questions such as name, address, country to send, mm-hmm. um, uh, and the, the minimal bid. The minimal bid was uh, 300 plus shipping cost. Yeah. And the shipping cost would depend on the country. Mm. Um, but this is very important. I previously worked with a company with um, good uh, rates. So before doing the, the auction or the, or the lunch, uh, taking, be, be. Like working out the, the shipping. Yeah, you roughly. should, you should, you, yeah. you should have worked previously with a comp- with a good company for, for ship, shipping your artwork. Yeah, I think also like just having like often before I do a big, big launch because because like different projects I have, I have different size boxes and different size boxes and different weights, way diff- you know, cost different things to ship um, rather than shipping the same size, same weight every time. So what I'll do is I'll get mock addresses. I actually look, look up restaurants in different places. <laughs> and I use those and I put them into the, because you know, there's like usually online forms where you can yeah. like, it'll estimate how much things cost to ship. Yeah. Um, mm. Just so that I can work it out roughly. I know that it's not going to be exactly the same. And to be yeah. honest, shipping rates change by the day, but as long as you get a ballpark figure, that's usually quite helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. um, during that week, I got seven messages um and i was really impressed because uh the final bid was 1375 dollars wow. <laughs> and it <laughs> and it was a painting that i that that i planned to sell for 300 so oh. it was like oh my god <laughs> now yeah there's so i mean so you got 10 10 bids overall is that right yeah <gasps> So what? Okay, all right. Well, this is exciting for two reasons, right? So firstly, you have 10 new potential future clients that you can just reach out to. Well, if sorry, you... I, I got seven, seven new. new seven, very, seven, seven. Uh, and some people message multiple times. Yep. And so you've got seven new potential clients mm. that, mm-hmm. you know, you already know. It's interesting when you run these auctions because you understand like, A, what kind of artwork they like because they've bid on specific art pieces. B, you know roughly what their budgets are for various different pieces, yeah. which is not and not something you're prescribing, something they are prescribing, which is super interesting. Mm. You know, and, and see, then you also get to sell your own artwork at you know at the highest value between all of these amazing people and, yeah. and also then put those proceeds to help something or you know uh, you know or for other things for funding people's own lives but wow <laughs> yeah incredible. because well, in june i made an exhibition um yeah. this painting was um on sale yeah. and i think it was like 325 euros i think it was something like that so mm. I realized <laughs> that the the well as as Kat told me once, uh, my paintings are really cheap. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> like, what a great realization is that, though? Hi. Hey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because when I talked with Kat the first time, she told me two things. You <laughs> painted a really cheap. Yeah. Um, and you should close your Etsy shop because I had an Etsy shop. Nice. And she explained to me the difference between craft and art. Mm. And yeah, I was I was thinking that my art was craft and it's not craft. It's mm. it's another thing. Is a is a is a um, is an idea. Is a is a feeling that what what I'm selling is mm. um way of thinking. It's yeah, not craft. That, yeah. That's true. We're not making wall decorations per se. Yeah. I mean that might be its ultimate destination, but you know, actual true art is about you know like you know. It, it might be about bringing joy to someone. It might be about them connecting to the cosmos. It might be about them realizing that we're out here floating in a big ocean and we're all on, alone on this planet and we have to look after each other. So that message is the art. And mm. it's like, it's an invaluable asset. It's an invaluable thing. Mm. Obviously the way in which you execute is a craft, but you know, yeah. that's why, you know, abstract art, still is so deeply valuable because it's not necessarily like how hyper realistic someone can do something no. it's about like really the intensity of, of the the either of the emotions that people feel when they look at the art because sometimes art might not make sense but it just makes you feel a way and that's wonderful mm. but sometimes it's about these deeper messages but yeah so that's the great that's a great takeaway <laughs> yeah and if you don't believe in yourself no one is going to do it so you <laughs> You have to believe in can yourself you see, and believe in your art. Can you see, Pila, though, that your the purpose that you gave this made you move? Mm. You, you didn't make it about, because we talk about, I think the second episode is about your purpose. You had yeah. a really compelling purpose to make you do things that you felt uncomfortable doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was it, it, it was this this conflict. It, this conflict pushed me yes. to do it because I re I was really scared. Mm. But when I suffered watching all of the all of this, it pushed me to to you have to do something. You have to help. Right. <laughs> you have to. So that was what pushed me to do the auction. Um, yeah, and I think that. When you have to do it the first the first time, I think it's the most difficult thing that you have to that, that an artist have to do the, the the first lunch, the first auction, the first yeah right that first the step first can step be step a little thing. daunting yeah. yeah you're putting yourself yeah. out there and you don't know how it's going to be received, but that's the difference between you know selling your art or or not really. So right. yeah, you intend to do another auction. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would like to do another auction, but I also want to do a launch with my like a shop. I would like to to try also that. Okay. Um, and I think maybe in three four months I will do I will do once. Um, but my only yeah, um, the only reason yep. I'm asking you is because last time you had a really compelling reason to do it. Next time you do an auction, can you have a really compelling reason to do it for yourself? Like, it's mm. great you're going to do a launch now for your own website, your own shop. That's fantastic mm -hmm. because it's great as artists. We do have the capacity to um, produce things and make money for causes. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, if you want to make a living at this, it's like you've got to have yeah, a I, I, purpose for that. Yeah, sorry, Kat. I was going to say, yeah. So actually, I guess this comes down to the question of, what is the meaning of your artwork and why it is why are you compelled to make it and why are you compelled to share that message and what what is that message well basically that we are not aware that we are connected to the cosmos and we are not aware in our daily lives we are not conscious about what is out there if we were more conscious there will there wouldn't be any war there wouldn't be any <laughs> you mm. know any any fight between culture countries um yeah basically sometimes i think why politicians don't think <laughs> very much about um, what is out there um yeah. 
why we are not so conscious because we are always you know um studying our planet and you know the the the, the milky way and, and that's it but when we there are many people that don't know what a what a nebula is it's true and, it's very true um there are many people that ask me ah oh, and this is from your imagination or you watch it <laughs> and well, it's like quite. really you don't know what a nebula is or really <laughs> Right. Um, I think if we were more conscious about it, there wouldn't be so many differences between between us because we are all the same. It yeah, doesn't matter the, the country. And that's why I like for very much to talk with, with, with people in other languages and to know other cultures because I think we are all the same. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> It is true. And I, I remember you explaining your your purpose is like um, when we spoke weeks and weeks before any of this mm -hmm. uh, uh, things with the Ukraine way, way before, which was, yeah, I remember you saying something along the lines of this cosmic perspective, how mm -hmm. it, it, you know, when you look at Earth from a distance and it's this tiny, precious blue marble in the sky the borders between countries make less sense and yeah that it's like this concept of unity so it's interesting because even with this even with the cause it actually kind of fits in very deeply with your purpose so really for the next launch it's just hyper focusing on not necessarily specifically like this is a specific nebula but being able to as you just did, like talk so passionately about bringing people together. Yeah, because at the beginning, when I was selling my artwork at the beginning, I was think I was, yeah, saying, well, I remember I did it like three, four years ago, an exhibition and, and it was, this is an acrylic painting and this is an oil painting and that's it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was not able to, exp I was embarrassed to, 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 to explain that message. Yes. However, three years later in last June I did the last exhibition um it, it was a completely change because I realized that 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 what I'm selling what 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 I'm what I'm sharing with the world is a message it's not the craft is the message right That's something that not artists know yes <laughs> I love the way that you said you know you got that realization that you were embarrassed to explain your art yeah I think that's yeah. that's probably the crux of it for every everybody, isn't it? Really, if you right. you're sort of trying to find your feet, it's like don't be embarrassed to to to. I suppose it's your voice. You found your voice. Yeah. And now you you know it's it's the connection is there because you found your voice around it, and you're quite happy to stand your ground and speak your truth. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And I, I um, think that also like like beyond just sharing your artwork which is also like even the even the craft of it is quite personal to to a degree but then when it comes to the actual message there's always these thoughts in the back of your head like what happens if people think I'm an idiot or they don't <laughs> like it or they shun me for some reason like boo you know <laughs> right because also some people's artworks like you know might be quite like the con the reason why they do it um, they still might like because I think that sometimes it takes a while to understand like occasionally we are compelled to produce things and we don't quite know why you have to do a lot of this like introspection yeah. to realize oh actually this is why I'm into it like you know even for me like I think I uh, I think it took me years I was the same I was like this is a picture of our galaxy <laughs> I didn't hadn't even occurred to me that the reason why I was so obsessed with it is because like for me this was like a almost like my spirituality like I'm not religious but that was like how I connected to things yeah mm -hmm. so yeah it's a, and, and sometimes you have to explain parts of you reveal parts of your soul that I don't know I found it I found it deeply embarrassing yeah um especially like some people's artworks are like also about personal trauma or challenges or like a time when they didn't feel safe so now they produce artworks that make people feel safe but then you've got to go there to that place that it's always a challenge and that can be hard but I think once you see it starting to help people, mm. like, honestly, Chris, I keep on thinking about that, that story of that woman who bought that, um, 
uh, picture the of a bird, cock rooster. Do you want to explain? Uh, yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I listened to it. the 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 house that it was burned, and um, yeah. she bought you a yeah. That yeah, was a really nice, in nice the gallery story. And, and kept walking past it, walking past it. You're like, I've got to have it. A little colorful rooster. You know how much difference that can make to somebody. It was like her whole art collection had been burned down. The house had been burned oh. down, but this was like a little starter to yeah. To what's next? You know. Because like I'm, mine are all colourful and 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 joyous, my paintings. So I love I love the colour. So that really really touched me, you know. Because we all go through those things where you're not selling, and it's like, oh, you know, sometimes it's just too hard. And then somebody tells you a story like that, and you think, oh my god, yeah. Realise what I did meant that much to somebody else. You think yeah. oh, that touches you, doesn't it? I had a similar experience, um, which, by the way, I'm so glad that lady got that little rooster and started her collection off and brought a bit of joy to her life. And when you hear that, yeah. it, it makes doing those scary things, they're still scary, but it gives you more compelled, it makes you more compelled to, you know, it gives you more, I don't know, well, muster to go. That, because saying like scary, that, I, it was an art shop, the woman's a bit, you know, I'd gone in and I was I was nervous going in. Took, yeah, I, I went in, paintings tucked under my arm. Some she just went over and went, oh, it's too simple, too simple. And she stood and she said, I can see you can paint, as she pointed at things. And I was like, oh, oh God. You know? <laughs> You know, but it's like, I can see you can paint. And I thought, oh my God. And then she kept a few. And, uh, you know, you come out and you're like, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Terrified. Yeah. Thinking yourself in that situation to, to, you have to just do it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But I I like that idea of sometimes you have to do it and you have to do it scared. (laughs) Yeah. Well, when you're doing it scared, you know you're doing a big thing. You know, you know you're, yeah. you're having a, a leap. I had like a similar scenario. I don't know if I told the story, but I, I recently met up with someone that had bought a print. Actually, it wasn't even an original, mm. and um, uh, they brought it to me a year after they purchased it, and I signed it, and mm. they cried, and it was such a beautiful moment. But I was not expecting someone to cry over the signing of the print. Yeah. But then they explained why. And um, the person was a resuscitation nurse, which, and they came online um, during the beginning of COVID, which like they were there doing the chest compressions at the very last moment when the people's lungs were like full with gel, you know, gel, and they knew that they weren't going to survive. And they've got like, the family on zoom watching them and they're just going to try and save this person's life Mm. and how insanely hard that job is and I can't remember if they said it was on the day that they purchased the artwork or on the day that it arrived but they had the hardest day of their life Mm. and they were they still get a bit of PTSD they still see the face of the dead Mm. people that they didn't save that day and and they Mm. I think on that particular day it was their worst day ever it was in the height of coronavirus and they lost like five people or something like that three to five people so incredibly hard and the, you know he was explaining that he would go to this room with all these pictures of space and he would just meditate and like reconnect to the universe and, and how much that made them feel so me coming and signing this painting was such a big deal and I sat there and thought wow yeah. you know I had no idea that art could be you know sometimes you think oh it's just a picture but actually the meanings are so important Mm. before we finish do you have any questions that you'd like to ask either of us yeah I wanted to ask you some questions uh one of them is how do you deal with uncertainty um the fear of failure how do you deal with say that word again uncertainty uncertainty yeah sorry (laughs) uncertainty and fear of failure Oh, Ooh, that's, that's coming out with the big yeah. questions. <laughs> that's a big oh, oh, a certainty in the field of failure. I, but I think I, I'm thinking break it down. 
break it down yeah. more uh, what it is it is it that you're you're scared of like it's fear of failure fear of failure is a big thing a big word I think people use that a, a lot of the time but it doesn't actually mean anything it's like break it down more to find out what are you scared of what are you actually afraid of right a lot of things to me is being humiliated I don't want to look an idiot or feel you know so humiliation is a is a thing for me where I have to put myself in a comfortable position so you know I've got enough knowledge or I've practiced enough so I feel comfortable so what is what would failure because not doing anything you fail anyway yeah yeah so what is it that you're actually afraid of. I like of. that idea. I like the idea of breaking it down. Like for instance, some days I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed and, and stressed. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, well, what's creating it? So yeah. You know, um, like, I, I, Karen, yeah, I wanted to say that it's normal that you are overwhelmed because you do so many things <laughs> <laughs> that every time that I watch you on Twitter, it's like, oh my God, I do one thing and I'm, oh. and I'm so, and I'm terrified and you do so many things that, that I think that that was a, a great question for you. Kat, how do you deal with this? So many? <laughs> well, I think that that's actually, so, so as Chris said, you break it down, right? So often what I'll do, if I'm feeling in like an, and sometimes I realize that it's not just one dominant thing. It could be like a haze of different situations that are making you feel in a particular way. So I get a big bit of paper and I write in the med middle, what the hell is like, what, what, what the hell, like, why do I feel so bad? Or what, what is getting me down? Or what, what are my challenges right now? And I will feel everything. I'll just write even the stupid stuff, like, you know, some days I feel blocked on doing a particular task because I feel bad about the fact that I've not got my tax done or I've got a, a meeting coming up and I've not prepared a slide deck or do you know what I mean? Like, or it could be something just really small, you know, like, Oh God, I've got all of this stuff and, and my house is a mess or, you know, I've got to, I've got to wash my clothes. Cause I got to go on a trip or so, you know, sometimes it's like small things, but like a million small things add up, you know? So I'll write everything down, but, but that's more about like current situations and dealing with stress and anxiety, um, mm -hmm. versus like understanding underlying fear. And I think, I think there is a, a, there's a good value to asking the question, is this really true? And where did this come from? Um, in order to seek, um, a bit of clarity on like, what, you know, where, you know, how, like, you know, like realizing that I was scared of doing specific things. Um, like for, for you might, you know, you might say like, oh, I'm scared about doing the YouTube, you know, going on YouTube or doing this kind of thing because I feel, you know, I don't feel uh, confident with my English, let's say hypothetically, that might be something that mm -hmm. you might find a block. So the question is then, is that really true? Like, is it really a problem? Like I have, you have many great, you know, so I often then sit and rationalize because I think it's really important to actually rationalize all these things, right? We have all of these great conversations in a foreign language with other yeah. people and you're capable of teaching people and all of these things. So is it really true? Well, not really. It's just a thing that you're feeling at the time. Um, yeah, yeah so I, I suppose it's the syndrome post, uh, imposter that you have it in, in your mind. <laughs> In your, in your ears. Yeah. Talking to you. <laughs> and I think also then catching the language, Chris is the best at this. Catching the language of say, when you catch yourself saying, oh, I can't do this. I'm not good at it. Catching it, like shh, grab the words and then changing them. What, what, Chris, what's your advice on that? Because a lot of it is about what we tell ourselves, how we feel. Just awareness, like even the language you're using, like, terrified yeah. um, it's when you use those words just try and catch yourself when you do because that's yeah. pretty that's a strong word terrified is is a really strong word it and is. I would say to you to get that out of your vocabulary to start with yeah 
You know, it that's not doesn't serve you. Any of these words yeah. that you use constantly that you find yourself over again and you go, gosh, I say that all the time. I say that, I say that. Be, start becoming aware of when you just say them and then replace them with something else. Because actually, yeah. you know, you're saying you're terrified. You're probably actually not terrified. You're terrified. You stand on the edge of the cliff and somebody's going to throw you over. You're terrified. <laughs> <laughs> going on a youtube channel are you really are you feeling a little bit a little bit butterflies is it a little bit you know you could call it nervous you could call it excited nervous and excitement they're the same feelings they're the same stomach if you if you feel mm, them yourself acknowledge at the time you'll feel that they're, they're a similar feeling and if you switch your brain over to go i'm excited it's not nervous. I'm excited now. Oh, my, it's, my nerves is coming and I'm, I'm excited about doing this. Yeah. It's like when you're on a, a roller coaster and you hear people scream, mm. you actually do, like there are people that are screaming that are having a terrible time. There's people screaming that are having a good time. And the only thing that's made the difference between whether they have a good time or a terrible time is they've decided yeah. this is fun or they've decided this is terrifying it's yeah. really interesting <laughs> there is a fire yeah, that's true <laughs> right I, 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 I say this quote quite often but there was this thing about these two few, potential future rock stars and one but they were about to go on stage and the first one said oh I'm about to go on stage and perform my my hands are shaking my palms are sweaty my heart is racing. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. I, I, I can't do this. I'm so scared. I, I can't go out there. And then this other, you know, rock star come out and they said, oh my God, I'm about to go on stage. My hands are trembling. My palms are sweaty. My heart is racing. This is the biggest adrenaline rush. This is better than sex. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Let's do it. Right? So the body reactions are the same between excitement and fear. There is the only difference is whether you what how you label it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so the words that you say to yourself are incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself saying this is very terrifying all the time, mm -hmm. like you don't know, you just take those snatch those words back and go, no, actually, I need to not mm -hmm. label it that because actually that label can actually do more damage sometimes than the actual, that actually makes it sometimes feel more intense or, feel, you know, the way that you assign it, you're suddenly the person on the stage going, oh, I'm having a panic attack versus the person on stage saying, this is better than sex, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> awesome. So Fila, do you have another question? Yeah, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, what if a collector doesn't like the work once it arrives? <laughs> right, that's such a great question. Because especially, yeah, especially when you send online. Yeah, um, so I think there's a lot to be learned from this because I've also had the same things happen right now. You know, years in, um, I had someone make a request for a design. So I painted the design, but they didn't really like it. Um, even though it was the agreed upon design, because <laughs> that's sometimes how it works. Um, so uh, sometimes I will, uh, so in this particular case, I can make a small amendment to the painting and mm -hmm. it's actually not what we'd originally agreed on, but it will make it look better. And I know it will make it look better and that's okay. Um, I think also there's a lot to be done about setting the framework at the beginning. So making people aware of like what they're getting and setting, sending them in advance, highly detailed scans of the artwork before there, mm -hmm. especially if it's an online purchase. So I'll send them one of those that is like, neutral color balance so it's not like because obviously when we see things on instagram and you know you don't know how bright someone's phone screen is so that you know the painting might look significantly brighter and then in addition to that i always send them a booklet about how to display artwork because what looks what a piece looks like in studio lighting is not what it looks like under dim yellow lighting 
mm-hmm. right? And it can zap all of the color and intensity and all of that kind of stuff. So I always send like an information pack, pack about actually how to even display the artwork because that can really change the experience of an artwork as well. Just the light that's been shone onto it. Mm. Um, um, what would you do if you have uh, someone that doesn't like an art piece, Chris? I've only had it where, you know, it's still in the studio and then I've sent um, pictures along the way. So it's still, you know, and they said, oh, can you do this a bit more and that? And if it fits in with, you know, that it would enhance it or, you know, if it doesn't, then I'll, I'll explain to them why that that's probably not a very good idea. But, you know, in some cases I've gone, yeah, that's fine. I can make that, you know, whatever. Make an adjustment. It's, yeah make an adjustment for them but I've never had it when they've actually got it back at um, the, the yeah I think because I suppose because we've been through that process of you know it's a commission they've seen photographs they see the end photograph so as far as I'm concerned it's like you've seen what it is you know so I've, yes. I've had that yeah I so because it is a challenge and I've had it, I've had it more than once actually. Yeah. So um, I've either added a, an amendment to it and been like, okay, just, you know, either send it back or mm. you know, we can make an amendment to it or whatever it is. Um, sometimes though, it's be- the process of varnishing is not complete. And that's really important in particular with oil paintings, you know, you get, they go sort of the chalky and they lose all their luster and they lose all their intensity and vividness until you can varnish them six months after they've been made. For um, you, so, I you must know, cl- clarify, that's for your type of paintings. That's for specifically for oil, yeah, like oil, not, oil paintings. Not all oil paintings. Like I don't oh, oh that. yeah, because you do really thick. I don't, you know, they don't need to. It's just that don't, need to. don't freak out. You don't need to varnish right. oh, okay. paintings. So some, some paintings, if you're not making a textural oil painting, if you're making like a, you know, a lot, a lot of them you don't have to. Don't They're you? Not- Interesting. Yeah. Well, oil, all oil cures and it cures it a slightly different color. Mm. So um, it depends, like I obviously use lots of different brands of oil paint, but, but most of them mm. do cure, but it takes 12 months. So you often don't see that fade until much later. Now, if you've sold it and you haven't varnished, mm. um, at least with every brand of oil paint I've ever used, I have to go back and varnish it and it's very important and that can impact how people experience something mm. um, um how do you do it because <clears throat> if you sell a painting you're gonna wait for 12 months before sending yeah well it's always a conversation i have prior to sell like prior to payment i'll say do you want this varnished or not and here's the implications of either ah, okay so um, but I always recommend that it is because it's it's good. It's actually good to protect your pieces as well, especially if you're doing like detail work. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Uh, so on the instance when someone has purchased something and they've got like, say, for instance, hypothetically that a wrong item has arrived or it's not quite what they wanted. Um, often what I will do is I will off, I will say, you know, I can, you know, obviously all sales are final. And it's really important that's in all of my terms and conditions. However, if another buyer appears for that piece, then, you know, I will provide the refund from like those monies. But almost always my the value of the painting has gone up. So it will be resold again at a higher value. The person will be refunded. And then, of course, the, the difference is then used to ship the piece over. So that's something that I've also done. But that's with prints. So, you know, maybe someone's ordered a print and they've decided they didn't, you know, they didn't necessarily want it or they got the wrong design or something and they go, oh no, I've got the wrong one. Um, I'll say, okay, I'll, you know, the sales are final because everything's made to order. But if there is another buyer for it, then I can I can get it sent to that buyer. And, and I will, depending on the coordination of it, either they'll send it back to me yeah, you know, yeah. most often they'll send it back to me. I'll I'll wrap it and resend it. So that's yeah. another option too. Um, but sometimes it's just a really good opportunity to have a frank, open, honest, curious discussion as to how they feel about the piece. 
And that can be quite daunting, but there could be lots to be learned from those situations. So, you know, it might be that, you know, uh, you know, and, and it might help you steer the way that you sell pieces in the future and how you, because I, I believe that the, the setting expectations is really important. Like in particular, when I'm working with commissions, um, you know, I have to explain to people that the reference images are actual real photographs from the actual universe. And this is going to be a painting. So it's going to look like a painting and not like a photograph. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, so there's lots of things like that. And I, I think that, yeah, I think the most important thing also, or, you know, you can't always please everyone all the time. And people often have different expectations so if they've only ever seen prints of actual photographs you know they might not realize that a painting looks like a painting you can see brush strokes and you can see mm. you know all sorts of bits of stuff like that and and depending on you how you light it it's going to look different you know if you look at it on a f- different devices when they come to purchase the colors are going to look slightly different too and that's okay mm. you know so been able to have those conversations with people prior to the purchase, which I know it doesn't help you in this situation right now, but it will definitely help you in the future. And, and I think this is an important thing for everyone that does online selling. You know, um, I always get all my artwork scanned before I sell, send it anyway, because I want to make prints, but, you know, slightly down res that, that file and then send it to them prior to the order, um, you know, so that they can, you know, see in detail what it is they're getting and that that can help as well um i think and also the other sorry Cass. sorry i think as well i was gonna say it's not to take it personally Mm. you know there's because that can be a really you know yeah (laughs) so it's like to be to have that conversation like kat says but to not take it personally because it's here like maybe i'll learn something for next time i'll change how i do it yeah, and even having that conversation with, look, I'd love to talk, chat about it, but not, be, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to organize, you know, to, to resell the piece and organize a refund that way. Um, but also because I'd love to learn and I'd love to do better. So if you could give me any, you know, pointers. Now, I've had people return stuff with like, it had like a tiny, almost like a, a fleck, of, of paint in the wrong place. And I recognized there wasn't anything wrong with the painting. Mm. It might be that they were actually financially in a difficult position and that's why they needed the money. Mm. And it's easier to say, I don't like it or it's not wow. good enough than to say, actually, I just need a refund because I'm I've fallen on hard times. Cause that can also be very embarrassing for people to admit. So mm. there's just, put it on in a different way so just be aware that that might also be a situation playing out yeah 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 well um the last question <laughs> um have you ever asked for help when running your art business <laughs> it's difficult asking for help it's really all difficult. the time <laughs> <laughs> all the time and you know um like I've had other businesses as well and it's been a learning curve it's been a learning curve to ask for help because you know I've been in business for 15 20 years and you've been in business by yourselves really having to mm. learn every skill that you learn till like me and Kat met at a business group it's a business mentoring group that we're in and till yeah. that really I it took me a few years even in the group to be able to start asking for help because it's not yeah, yeah. wasn't a natural thing for me to do because I've never really had anybody in business to help me. So it's really cool. Once you actually get the hang of it, it's so much fun. <laughs> oh you yeah. Can't own anymore, are you, Cash? You know? That's right. Cash. I, <laughs> I think it can be hard, you know, um, you know, because it can be embarrassing. Like, and also it's like the context of an and and situation. You know, I wouldn't necessarily ask for specific help via my art page because of course you also want to put forward a you know a positive persona and it's not necessarily something that you would want to put client facing but it's certainly in my personal channels um 
But, you know, I would say, Pilar, that, that actually you are the master at this because, you know, you you reached out to me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was so and it was a beautiful you like you'd written a beautiful message and um I I just yeah, think yeah. that that I think it was amazing you know and like a lot of people wouldn't do that and so what you know and I'm so glad you did oh and thank you, you. So would actually, you mind I would if, like I, to would you mind if I tell you this story yeah put it I'm gonna put it back on you so you tell us how to do it <laughs> Uh, well, I started to paint a space art like five years ago. Well, I've been painting all my life, but space art five years ago. Um, and I didn't see Kat uh, mm -hmm. until one year, more or less, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And the first time that I watched it, that, that I watched her, <laughs> I was so sh I, I couldn't have slept. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was like oh my god she's been be because she also has been five years like me yeah so I compared myself something that you you mm. you you, ha you don't have to <laughs> because you only have to compare with yourself but I compare myself with her and mm. then I saw that she did so many things in five years and I was like almost in the same point mm. um so the the first the, the first moment was so so shocking that I had like a few days to 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 realize so after that I realized that she was like my teacher <laughs> <laughs> she could be like my teacher it was like okay if she did it yeah. it's like it's possible to do it so right. yeah. what did she did what did she do sorry what did she do that I can that I can do by my own. Mm. So I started to analyze here. <laughs> I analyzed. Yeah. I was all done this, I think. <laughs> I analyzed the Instagram, the paintings, the well, then I realized she had a um she had also um a team. Mm. So okay, I, I I was able that I was only by my own and she had a team. So okay, but in five year times, in five year time, what can I do to have a team? Hmm. What did she do it? So hmm. I started to copy her. Yeah. And then once she told me, uh, she, you sent me a message and you told me that my hour was fabulous. Yeah, it was because you're you're, ah, you're, you're ah. a deeply, deeply talented artwork. <laughs> Sometimes I look at yours and I'm like, oh, I've got to learn how to paint. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kat. And there's also a, a funny thing. A friend of mine sent you my Instagram <laughs> because I told my friend, <laughs> I, I, I showed my friend your Instagram, but I was not able to, 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 to write to you. So a friend of right. mine, write to you wrote to you and told you oh this is Pilar Goga have you seen this <laughs> so when you told me oh your painting is so nice so fabulous and nice then I say okay I have to to to, to tell her what 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 she 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 has been in my life because <laughs> you have been like a reference you know you have been like a before and after <laughs> <laughs> so I told her a long text <sighs> And I thought she's not going to reply. She's going to think I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> but she replied, and we are here. <laughs> right. The rest is history. And yeah. there you go. You took the chance. You took the chance. And here you yeah. are. Here you are. You know, that's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I was wondering if you did the same as me. Like, do you ask for help? I, I was... Actually, I, it took time to me to ask you for help. It mm. took it took a, a few months. Mm. Um, I I actually have reached out to multiple artists, mm. and not everyone's going to be very forthcoming. So it turns out and share what they do, and that's yeah. a okay. Mm. It didn't deter me from continuing to explore it. I looked at lots of different ways of improving where I'm at. 
whether it's watching YouTube, honestly, I think when the first time I had a successful campaign, I went to YouTube and would put in, what do artists do all day? Because <laughs> I've got no idea, <laughs> right? Um, you know, but I've reached out to, you know, I've, I've actually not had lots and lots of deep conversations. However, I think what happens is you just interact online, you find the person, or not necessarily the person, but the group, you know, and I found Chris and I instantly knew that we would be best friends for our entire <laughs> lives. I just knew. Sometimes you just do, don't you? Yeah. And um, and uh, again, like we just throw around ideas and all of that stuff too. Yeah. But I also sometimes like, so it depends on the actual topic um, because it's funny because like talking to people that aren't artists about art business, for some reason, they start to assign stuff that they would never tell a normal business to an artist. Mm. So just to be aware of where you're getting advice from, yes. because, you know, so I'm like, uh, you know, but then on sometimes, so like I'll ask someone about like how to specifically do email marketing in another business and that's fine. But if you ever ask often, like, oh, how do I make my art business successful to someone outside? Mm -hmm. For some reason, they tell you to do stuff that they would never say to a normal business. <laughs> I don't know why. That's very true. That's very true. I, and it's so important to be careful who you ask. Yeah. 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 So, of course, like, uh, take advice from people who have done the thing that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um uh, taking advice from uh you know spectators <laughs> yes. um because uh it's not all, you know from from the outset the way that the, the path forward looks one way but it actually isn't often that way so you know I always like to talk to people that have actually done it or achieved it or whatever it is so you know I remember I reached out to um oh god I think his name's Thimja uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> I can't, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's like Nordic, um, but he had lots of success on video on, on Facebook. So I sent him a, a big message and, and, and he responded back and he's, and we talk all the time now and he's so lovely. And, yeah. um, but you know, I, yeah, I, I do it a lot now, but at the beginning it's a bit daunting, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. Sometimes it can be harder when you're really experienced. Cause you're like, Oh God, everyone's going to think, why is she asking me? She should know this. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's really important what you said there, Kat, is picking, picking your topics. You know, if there's somebody who's really good on email marketing, somebody who's really good on Insta. Yeah. Mm. The individual people to do that. Seek yeah. the person that actually has the knowledge, you know, or you, you doesn't have to be believe. art related, does it? It doesn't have yeah. to be art related, but don't yeah. necessarily ask um, someone that sells something random to uh, like how you should position and sell a piece of artwork for instance yeah. however they might be able to talk about another business aspect so yeah get the right person for the right question I guess is important mm. so what are we doing next week okay. Cass? right well it's great to have you Pila thank you so much thank you for having me here I really had a good time I'm this so been... happy to be here <laughs> It's been amazing. Thank you, Pilar. So for everyone else watching, have you got questions for Pilar? Let us know in the comments. As always, all our social links are in the description. Please make sure you give us a follow so you can catch future episodes. Our next episode, we're going to be talking about how to get clients through email. Very excited. But until then, I'll see you. Bye. 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 <laughs>